What's good, YouTube? I'm currently in Decatur here at Major Cuts. I'm about to do an interview with somebody that I met doing a kind of like voluntary work. We basically did some haircuts for some kids and students at a detention center in the area, not too far from where I'm at today. Basically, we're going to do an interview with Mr. Dewan Majors. He's a dope barber man, and I just hope we can get a little bit of insight and, you know, figure out where he got his start and then what keeps his motor going. So uh, stay tuned. What's good, man? How, How you doing, been? man? I've been all right. How about yeah. yourself? Been good, man. Um, like I said in the intro, uh, we met at the detention center. We were pretty much doing volunteer services, like mm -hmm. doing haircuts for the kids in there or whatever. And um, just some of the conversations we were having and some of the things you were saying kind of pushed me towards like trying to get this interview. Okay. Just to get to know you a little bit better and then give everybody else that follows me a perspective of like how many people that we have in the industry that I feel are of quality and kind of got a message to tell people because okay. the way it started and what caught my attention is um, the last haircut that we did. When I said, to, um, I said to this one dude that he said he was a rapper and I was telling him that you probably shouldn't get into it for the money. Right. And then you turn around and said <laughs> the exact same thing. <laughs> and then he, his, his eyes kind of opened up to that. So um, I guess my first question would be, man, do you consider this to be still a profession or do you look at it as a hustle? No, it's a profession. Like, as an instructor, one of the main things I used to focus on was telling people it's not a hustle. I hate the word hustle. You know what I'm saying? Although, once you do become a barber, you have to hustle to get your money. You can't just sit around and not get your money. But barbering itself is not a hustle. Right. And I say that because I used to hustle. You know what I'm saying? And the way that go, a hustle is anything that sells right now. So if people are getting haircuts right now, you cutting hair. But the minute they stop coming, you're not a barber no more. Right. Like, I got to go do something else. The money not coming in. But if you treat it like a career, then you start to go into the different things that are inside of barbering that make it a career and not just a hustle. You know what I mean? Gotcha. You get to not only cutting hair, but you get to doing your facials. You get to doing women's hair. You basically get to doing any and everything you're taught. You know what I mean? Right. And that's my big thing behind the hustle. I hate barbering got a hustle <laughs> or a side job because you don't respect it. And when gotcha. you don't respect it, other people don't respect it. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. And then I'm glad you touched on that because I'm also a barber instructor too. And um, I've never like put it that way to my students, but I did tell them that you get out of it what you put into it. Right. And then, if, like you said, if you treat it like a hustle, that's what it's always going to be because you're going to operate in fear of mm -hmm. like, well, this money might not always be here. So along the lines of that, along the lines of you being an instructor, like I tell everybody, I don't teach for the money. Right. I teach because I felt like when I came out of barber school, it was in Florida, I got out of and I went to North Florida Cosmetology. Okay. And great school or whatever, like I learned a lot of the stuff that I needed to pass the test or whatever, but when I came out, I didn't feel like I had the tools I needed to su to survive in the game, you know what I mean? Because I went to a barbershop and there's people in there cutting circles around me. And I can, you know, I'm struggling with all over even. So, mm -hmm. and I'm, I tell my students, I tell people, like it don't matter where you start, like if you put the, the dedication and the repetition into it, it'll come. So with that being said, do one, are you licensed? And two, do you still feel it's important? Yes, it's extremely important. I now hold I hold a license as a master barber, a master cosmetologist, and an instructor. And I'm getting ready to go to state board to get an instructor cosmetologist. Licenses are very important because to me, you can't do something and make it a profession and you're good at it if you're not licensed at it. Right. You know what I mean? And then once you, like anything you learn, I mean, anything you can do with your hands, you can learn. You know what I'm saying? Enough times you do it, it's not about that. But when you want to go upper level mm -hmm. and you start going to these different businesses, like Atlanta is booming now with the uh, movies. They won't take you if you don't have a license. Exactly. <laughs> like you go into a barbershop, the barbershop owner, you know what I'm saying? Some may do it, but if he's prestigious, he doesn't want to deal with the fact the state board might come in there and find him $500 just because you want to come in here and make money. Right. But then on top of that, for yourself. 
If you don't respect it, nobody else will. And respect is showing people paperwork. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Your yeah. price tag is showing people paperwork. You want to charge somebody $150, $200 for a haircut, but you haven't even done un, um, due diligence of going to get your license. You know what I'm saying? And it's the stuff that you learn with your license that helps you respect barber. It's not the cutting hair. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't learn how to cut hair in barber school. By the time I went to barber school, I already knew how to cut hair. You know what I'm saying? I was so smart. My instructor used to try to make me cut hair with my other hand because I felt like I knew everything. Yeah. But then he started putting me on other stuff. He helped me learn my um, my uh, cleaning and sanitation, my chemical texture services. You know, all the stuff to make you respect what it is that you're doing. Right. And you can give that information. Because right. inf- information is the price tag, not the service. Oh, yeah, definitely. Integrity, man. And then doing what is best for the client. Always, so, always. I went to school with a guy. I won't say his name, but man, he was like top notch with the Clippers mm-hmm. or whatever. And he did everything legitimately. And then he decided to go and work in the shop before we graduated. And within within three weeks, man, he came back. He was a different barber. He was pushing people in lineups back. You know, he was shortcutting stuff to get people to come back faster. I was like, bro, mm-hmm. it ain't a need for that. Like, mm-hmm. in my opinion, if you give quality service, like, people are going to come back. Mm-hmm. Like, if you give good conversation and, like you said, good advice where people can trust what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Like, I work in a barbershop. There's a salon in the back. And there's people, they be telling them all kind of stuff. I was like, that ain't right. Right. You know what I mean? Like, that that is not true at all. Right. Like, you know what I mean? And that's why I feel like people come to me because, like I said, I work in a barbershop with a salon in the back and there's still young men and young women that come to me and they prefer me to color their hair mm-hmm. because it don't fall out at the end of the month. Mm-hmm. So I, that's how I try to teach my students, man. You want to practice integrity and you want to, you know, up your ticket mm-hmm. and not in a in a crappy way, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like offer that, that guy who may be 50% great. Like, hey, you want to get rid of that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? If you didn't go to school, you don't know you had an option to do that. Right. But, Let me um, tell you how I learned to um, cater to people. Mm. You know what I mean? I had a I had a um, barber that I used to cut with. Now he didn't have no license, but there was in no in a five dollar barber shop that I started in. <laughs> but he was so good at customer service. Like, he used to mess people up. Oh man! <laughs> but I used to tell the students like I'm like man. I said the crazy thing about it is people don't even really know they getting messed up until they go and get it right. I said, but what was so outstanding about this dude is that he would mess people up, but he had a line out the door. Other barbers that were good would be sitting down. Yeah. And you couldn't figure out why, because he was a good person. Everybody that came in, he spoke to them. He knew their kids. He knew their mama. <laughs> he knew grandmama. You know what I'm saying? Even if yeah. he didn't know them, the way he introduced himself or the way he talked to them oh, yeah. by them coming in the door, you wouldn't even ask them if they needed a haircut because they were so engaged with one another. <laughs> like, he used to have a line and just sit there like, hey, man, how you doing? I ain't seen you in a while, man. I got, like, three right here. But if you just have a seat, you know, so we got some water art in the back, you have a seat and I'll get to you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then come to find out, he was like, man, you couldn't. I thought you was waiting on him. Nah, I just thought he was the only one available. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's how I got to caring for the people. Yeah. But once you go, once I added that with the fact that I wanted to know what I was doing, it kills the game. Yeah, that's another thing too, man. I try to teach my students not only get this tool or this technique that I'm teaching you, understand what makes it work and why it works that mm-hmm. way and why it's so proficient. And honestly, I got my angle of customer service from just bad experiences, man. Just going mm-hmm. to a different city and trying to get a haircut, trying to explain to somebody how I wanted my haircut. Like I understand you as an artist, you have your vision, mm-hmm. and like if I give you that liberty, then fine. But if I come in and I say, "Hey, man, I want a temp fade. I don't like it bald." And I, I want to see you next week. Don't, right. don't cut all my hair off. You know what I mean? Right. And you do the exact opposite of that. I'm going to have a problem with that. Right. And that's honestly how I got my start. I, I literally left that barbershop in Tallahassee, walked up the hill to Walgreens, bought the cheapest pair of clippers I could find, and started cutting my own hair. All right. You know what I mean? It went from that to my, my roommate, and then from my roommate to the people in the band, and it just went on from there. But customer service is very important. And then I've, I've been in countless of barbershops, man. You open the door and nobody even speak to you. Mm-hmm. And it's like, mm-hmm. what? How you? How you think the customer feel if like they're not used to this? If they walk in, and don't don't even mention trying to diversify, like, cause right? You if somebody of the other skin color walking yeah. in, you don't say nothing. They walking back out. But you can see it though. <laughs> you can see it though. If you sit in the shop and you watch somebody come in, they're waiting, like they're looking around, waiting to lock eyes with somebody, and then they just sit down. And then once they sit down and everybody talking and interacting, they still wait for somebody to acknowledge them. <laughs> exactly. The person that, that acknowledge, I'm sorry, how you doing, what's your name? They engage, that's yours. 
For life. <laughs> for life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But folks don't recognize that's why I was telling the young man that about our money. Because whenever you think about money, you don't put value in anything else. I cut your hair however I need to in order to get the money. You're not even worried about next week. You just want the money for right now. Right. Like you're not even trying to make this person come back. You just want the money yeah. for right now. I'm trying to go to the club tonight. I'm trying, trying to make get these shoes. Money. I'm gonna get this money now. And then next week when dude come in, he be like, "Hey, boy, what's going on?" And he walk straight past you. Hey, <laughs> what happened? You didn't treat the man you right. Didn't treat the man right. I used to tell one of the um, I used to tell the students one of the biggest things, and it holds true to this day. Whenever you get a new client, if they coming from another barber, one of the things you will hear the most is, "My barber never listened to me." They tell them what they want, and then most barbers are either arrogant, you know right. what I'm saying, and oh, I can do a skin fade, ain't nothing but a skin fade. I understand, you know, I do a skin fade, but you got to keep my skin fade low because I got a mark right here, and if you come up over, it's gonna put a line. But then they yeah. get in, oh, I know what I'm doing, and you cut it, <laughs> and now you can't get the line. Now you're trying to figure out what's going on. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or you're trying to cut it, and he don't want to line up a sharp line, and you don't hit him with a sharp line and put the spray and all that on, and yeah. he didn't want that. Yeah, all my clients, all my clients that come to me, they know I'm a I'm a very literal barber. You sit in my chair, you tell me what you want. I'm pretty much, you know, nine out of ten, I'm gonna do exactly what you tell me to do. Yeah. And that's why people come back. It's like, man, you the only one that's done exactly what I asked. I told a lot of people I got this scar right here. You the only one that's able to mask it. Mm -hmm. So like, that's why I try to teach people like, mm -hmm. don't always be so aggressive and eager to put your stamp on everything. Right. Like, there's a time and place for everything. Repetition is key. Like I tell the students, you have to make sure you understand what it is the client wants. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, I know there's one guy, and he said, well, how about the ones that's picky? And they don't understand. I said, you make sure you repeat it. Then you show them a picture. Then you repeat it again. And then you tell them this is what it's going to look like. So now you have to make sure you clarify. I said, because technically, if they get up and you done gave them something that they didn't want, why should they have to pay for it? Right. Like, if they asked you for a tent fade and you wasn't listening and now you done cut all their hair off and gave them a skin fade with a part in it and that's not what they want, I don't care if it look good or not. Yeah, that's not what It can be a crispy like. line, blurry fade, and a part yeah. ain't nobody ever did in their life. That's not what he want. That's not what he want. Now, I had to get an understanding with that because I would do it for free. If they didn't like it, I'd do it for free. Now, I don't like missing out on money. Right. But that's the way I discipline right. myself to make sure... I understand that you understand that you that you know I understand what it is you want. <laughs> right. That way there's no discrepancy. There's no discrepancy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You have to make sure that and then it also, all goes back to what you said, like caring for the client. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Also, if, even, even if they pay me for that one, because it's, it's legitimate people in the world, they understand that we do this for a living. We do this because right. we got families too. We want to provide for our folks. So even if they do pay me, like, you know what, bro, I appreciate that. You give me another opportunity, it's on me. Right. Like, when you come back, I got you. Like, right. Your next haircut on me. So I teach them. You know, to be respectful and do and own, own up to your mistakes and just try not to make the same mistake twice. And I had a um, I had a uh, a guy that came in, known him for a long time. He came in, brought his son, and then one day I was just moving, and he said, "Give him the regular cut." <laughs> I'm thinking, you know, I'm moving so fast. I thought I heard him say, "Give him a regular cut." <laughs> so he got the afro, normally get the sponge. Me not listening, cut the clippers on. Bow. Oh man. <laughs> Little boy sink down in the chair immediately. Uh, as soon as I hit it, he look in the mirror. I'm like, man, what's going on? What's wrong? His dad turned around. He said, oh, man, what you do? I said, you said the regular haircut. He said, man, his regular, not a regular haircut. <laughs> so yeah. what I did, you know what I'm saying, to comp compensate off that, I said, look, I made the mistake. Your haircuts will be free until your hair get back to where it's at. That's what's up. Because, you know what I'm saying, I made the mistake. I was supposed to be listening. I wasn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then even still, like you said, he's still a good dude. Although he didn't pay the full price for the haircut, he still had, gave me a tip That's every up. time. But it was the integrity that they kept him coming back and then referred his friends and his friends were referring somebody. Oh, it's just small stuff like that that help you with a level up. It's not really losing. It's like what you just said. It's taking accountability for your own fault. That's what's up. Man, and last question, somewhere in closing, I try to ask this to every barber I run in contact with, especially you being an instructor, I pretty much already know your answer, <laughs> but I'm going to ask it anyway just to, you know, appease the, the fans or whatever. As a barber, being experienced and an educator, do you feel it's more the tool or the technique? 
Uh, it's the technique and the tool. You gotta have the technique before the tool because if you got the technique, you can figure out how to get it done with the tool. You know what I'm saying? Like most people, they look at, at YouTube, these newer barbers, they all came in, all they want, well, yeah, 360 Jeezy did it this way and he was using this clip and he was using it. It don't matter what clip he using if you don't know how to use it. If you don't know what you're supposed to be doing, it don't matter. You know what I'm saying? Said- I said to somebody that he had every new clipper that had came out last year. I said, where's your transition space? He looked at me, he was like, my what? Don't know. <laughs> Don't know. You can have a $500 clipper, bro. If your transition ain't tight, them people ain't coming back. Mm-mm. I hate I hate looking at a ball fade that goes from ball to air. Yeah, or oh, they but, got too much, like they margin is too far apart. <laughs> like they got a whole ne- bit of negative space right here. And then the face started from that side. What is you doing? Yeah, you know man. what I'm saying? But that come from them watching these um, YouTube videos, which is, I used to tell students all the time. I said, you have to learn the technique so you can understand the lingo. Yeah. I said, now I can watch one of those YouTube videos and I can understand everything you're doing, even if he's not saying anything. <laughs> like even if his hands are just moving, because I know the technique, I can see where he's taking shortcuts. And he's getting done what he needs to get done. Right. But he always come back and get this done. If you just get out of those clippers and just flick your hand the way he's doing it, I'm not. No, you're not going to get it. You don't know what you're looking for. You, you don't know what you're doing. For, for me, is you don't have a beginning and you don't have an end. You don't know where to start at and where you're going. you just cutting and hoping that it works. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. with, with clippers, like I used to tell students all the time about money, you don't have to go out and buy these thousand dollar clippers two three hundred dollar clippers you don't need all that you know what i'm saying even when they were going to the hair shows i said i was one of them when i first started at my station i had like 20 pair of clippers just because every time i went to the hair show it was a barber on stage that was doing a clean skin fade and he would say you ain't gonna be able to do a fade unless you got these right <laughs> go to the next thing you're not even gonna be able to do a line if you ain't got these and then you get them and you realize that i didn't need them you know what i mean at all like i tell you there's four clippers beginners Four clippers. You need a surrogated blade, a surgical blade, and two liners. That should get. That's the basics right there. What you need. There's some people been cutting for five plus years. Don't even know the difference between a surrogate and, and a surgical blade. Man, that's the thing right there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like they asked the um, different clippers. I was like, man, if you you shouldn't be asking different clippers because all brands make the same kind of clippers. You about the same thing. You know what I'm saying? I need to know the motor, the blade. Yeah. Once I know the motor and the blade, then I can figure out who I'm going to use it on. Now, I've seen some people struggle with some fades because yeah. they can't figure out why they keep chasing that line. Yeah. I was like, bro, you change that to that and you use this clipper because the blade is different. The line yeah. is gone. Yeah. And they be looking like, how do you know that? Yeah, experience, man. But um, That's how it go, though. You know what I mean? <laughs> they just think that and they don't want to, like, nobody wants to take the time to actually learn. How. I ain't going to say that. I ain't going to say nobody. A lot of the, um, the women that used to come in and go to school, they listen. Because yeah. I used to tell people, women going to listen because they're detailed by nature. Yeah. So they want to know why. Yeah. Men just want to know how to do it. Yeah, they trying to get to the Yeah, we just want to, they just want to get it done. The women <laughs> want to know how. Yeah. So they'll see the clipper, like, oh, he had that clipper, I should be able to do this. They may, the woman may go and buy the clipper, but then she want to know, how is this working? How did this do that? Yeah. Why come when I push the clothes, it got that line out, then I opened it up, and the next one came out? Like, they want to know oh, stuff like that. Yeah, and I realized, like, even cosmetologists, like, I had to, I had the honor and pleasure of, like, you know, doing a haircut demo for the cos- cosmetologist at my school. Yeah. And I realized that they already have, like, the know-how. Mm-hmm. They already understand what a taper is and what a 45-degree angle is. It's just a matter of getting them out of their own head to let them know you're just changing the tube. The same thing you're doing with these shears, mm-hmm. you just putting a motor behind it. You mm-hmm. can do the same thing. You don't have to put a clipper guard on here at all. Mm-hmm. Use this comb, do your taper the way you want to, save money. That lady don't have to go two places. Mm-hmm. Especially if she just want to line. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or oh, the back. <laughs> yeah, you know, go with the gray, cut that thing down, line it up. But um, I wish I would have recorded it the day I was there. Like, I went there to get my hair done, honestly. And it's a girl, like you said, she was moving fast, didn't listen to what the man said. Mm-hmm. He sat down, he clearly said, I want a skin fade. I don't know what she heard, but that's not what she was doing. 
So I'm sitting adjacent from her. Mm. So she going to town. Ain't did nothing that this man asked. So I had to like turn my chair so I couldn't look at it because it was irking me. Yeah. And then the Cosmo struck the water. She said, what's the problem? I was like, just take the cape off. I'm about to go over here and help her. Yeah. So I had to end up doing a ball fade with a pair of tape of 2000s and mm. some peanuts. <laughs> Like, I should have recorded it, because the thing came out clean. Yeah, but you had to work for it. Oh, boy, I worked hard for you that had to, You had to work and stretch skin <laughs> and turn that sucker different angles and like, use the corners. Man, I worked I worked for that one. Like, literally worked for a butt. But that's because you knew the technique. Exactly. The tool didn't matter. And that's why I asked that question to every barber I run in contact with, because very seldom you can tell somebody that's going to say, yeah, man, it's the tool. And, you know, at some point I turned just, my ear off. You, know, you, you just cut hair then. You're not a barber. <laughs> <laughs> but as I expected, bro, this has been amazing. Yeah. And um, I, I surely hope that, you know, we can do this again. And if not, we can get some other people on that same train. And we can just let people know that are inspiring to be barbers, that it is a profession. Yeah. And you can go where you want to go if you just put your all into it. You know? Yeah. Man, I ain't gonna tell you no lie. Like it used to, I don't even know if they still a group now or a thing now. But they used to have this group of um, barbers that they logo or they brand was "Barbering Saved My Life." Yeah. Literally, like barbering gave me what I didn't have. Barbering was the first thing that I was ever good at outside of street stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And once I got good at it, became something that I became grateful for. So I showed integrity for how I move around. You know what I mean? Like the way I present myself, like everything the barber gave to me, I try to give it back. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, Major Cuts. Right, when I first got Major Cuts, it was just a brand name. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be Dewan the barber because everybody around me was doing their name in the barber. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I went with Major Cuts just because Majors is my last name and Cuts. Dude made the logo, it looked cool. Yeah. But after I've been in, after I was into it for a while, I began to try to figure out, because I listened to this dude, and he was like, man, when you do a brand, your brand is supposed to be parts of you. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're supposed to be giving people a part of you. That's why they come back to you. Right. It's not the service. It's what you give them, how you make them feel. So I went and broke major down. You know what I'm saying? I thought about all the stuff that Barbara has given me. So what I did with majors, I got, I broke it up into M is for Mary Toys, deserving praise. A is a plum, calm and self-confident. J is jubilant happy and triumphant, mm. O is omnipotent, having unlimited and very great power, R is revered, to hold in high regard. All of those feelings is what I try to give each and every one of my clients. Because I feel like that's what Barbara is giving to me. And as long as I stay within the lines of giving them that, it's something that they can hold on to. Because I believe clients don't come back to you, like you don't build clientele off haircuts. Because mm. there's somebody in a garage, in a prison cell, sitting on their grandmama front porch or in the kitchen that can cut just as good as you or better. It's how you make people feel, what you give them. And once they become attached to you, you become a part of what they do. Like they don't go nowhere else because they want to come see you. They want the experience. I've had clients that go somewhere else and get a haircut and come back and like, oh man, I went somewhere and dude messed me up and it, it just wasn't your cut. And I'm looking at the haircut like, it ain't. He didn't really mess it, it ain't up. Bad. But, but then you get to realize it, it's not that. It's the part of what you give them that wasn't in the cut yeah. that make them feel like it's not all the way together. Yeah. Yeah, man. So I used to always tell, tell the students, make sure whatever you do, you giving them a part of you. If you're doing anything for money, you're not going to respect what it is you're doing. You know what I'm saying? You drop it, let it go, because money <laughs> come and go, especially in this. Yeah. Like, all the students, you know what I'm saying, especially during this era where everybody see these Instagram barbers and everybody's, oh, I charge 150 and I charge 500 and I do all this. And you think, it'll make somebody think you can jump in this game and become a millionaire. Mm -hmm. Strategically, <laughs> sacrifice, yeah. and longevity, you yeah. know what I'm saying, <laughs> building on certain stuff, you can reach it that way. But just cutting hair, no, brother. Yeah, the realest thing I heard, it came from another uh, barber. Um, and he was saying that if you can go out and work at Walmart and they schedule you to be there from 8 in the morning to 4 in the evening, 
why not put that same amount of energy into your own business? Mm -hmm. Like you gotta treat it like it's a nine to five. Mm -hmm. like, Cause that's why I always tell people, you only gonna get out what you put in. Mm -hmm. So if you gotta be disciplined, that's what school teaches you. It don't mm -hmm. really teach you how to cut. It teaches mm -hmm. you how to be in one spot for multiple hours. Mm -hmm. And you gotta be able to lock in and hone that in. And like, and understand that if you spend six out of your eight hours twirling around in your chair and you only do two hours worth of cutting, go back to the drawing board, mm -hmm. get some flyers, get some business mm -hmm. cards. As an old barber, you tell me, go pound the pavement, man. Right. Just go talk to, to people. You used to have to get out there and move <laughs> around. Like, I like that you said that about um, just disciplining yourself to make it worth it. Like, when I first started, and I was in this for a while, and, you know, like, I used to tell the students all the time, they don't believe me because of who I am now. <laughs> but I was the cliche barber. And when I say the cliche barber, Hennessy bottle up under the station. Mm smoke weed in the car, then come back in. I was all in. I used to wonder how my mom and my son's mother, they used to all look like, I wish you would get a real job and stop playing around with that bar and stuff. And I'm like, what do you mean? This is a real job. I make money. But then I got to looking at it. You know what I'm saying? I got yeah. to looking at it through their lens. And it really, I was treating it like a hustle. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, it was like I was going to the spot and hanging out with my homeboys and drinking and just staying there late and doing whatever yeah. I wanted to do. There was no discipline and no structure. Yeah. to what I was doing. Yeah. So I had to change the game plan. And once I changed it up, people was, oh, I see, yeah. It, it makes a difference, man. Yeah. Appearance makes a difference. It's all about, like, I don't want to say tricking people, but it's all about changing that people's perception. Because I worked at Great Clips for a, a, a little bit, a little spell. And I used to come dressed like everybody else that was there. They would come kind of laid back, you know, um, slacks and like a polo or something like mm -hmm. that. I was like, I'm going to try something. I still wore the slacks, but I started wearing a button down and tie. Mm-hmm. Dude that used to come to me, he came to me at least two months before that. He came in and saw I had a tie on, it had a barber pole on it. My tip went from five dollars to twenty five dollars. Mm -hmm. All I did was change my shirt and my tie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just like, and I did that like, and I walked around like that. People were like, where you going? Why are you all dressed up? I said, why does it have to be so much of a difference when somebody mm -hmm. put on a shirt and a tie? Yeah, <laughs> let me tell you, like I didn't start putting on button ups and ties until I was in school to be an instructor. Mm. Like the guy who used to instruct me, he was always being there. He'd come to school, tie like he'd be real fly. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right, you know what I'm saying? I pee game, so I started dressing like that. And you know, coming from school, going to the shop, I just kept on what I had on. Yeah, I hate change. Now, <laughs> this was the thing. It, it made me so mad. I locked in and continued to do it because I would go to the shop and just like you said. <laughs> Look at him. That boy coming from court, ain't he? He got to go see his P.O. You Not know what I'm court. Yeah, and everybody, because that's the stigma in the hood. Like, if yeah. you see a black man with a suit and a tie on, you don't even think he going to go take care of business. You think he done been to the courthouse. Like, he going somewhere because he done had in trouble. Like, I used to be so mad about it. I made sure, like, you know what? For like a year or two straight, I didn't buy no tennis shoes, no jeans, no nothing. All I bought was slack, button downs. And it went from why he drank or something like that to, oh, yeah. He always dress like right. that. You know what I'm saying? And I started noticing the different kind of clientele I would get. Oh, yeah. That's you know what I'm saying? Like the mom, the single moms will walk in, and you see everybody in there moving around, doing their thing. They look to the most clean-cut dude sitting right in the front. Boom. But that led me to moving out of there because, you know, once you change up what you got going on, yeah, you got then you have to change the scene. Yeah. Like now, I didn't fit in in my environment. Right. Man, the bow ties and the ties and the button <laughs> Get into the hood shop. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I had to move and come out here and structure and discipline and putting everything together. It's been working for me ever since. That's what's up, man. And um, hopefully you can benefit from this and send some more people your way, man. Yes, and I'm yes, definitely going to send people your way if they on this side because a lot of people can't make it the way I'm at. Yeah. I'm definitely. always good at putting people in, in what I feel are quality hands. Yeah, I mean, I need more, more people because I've been... Like most of the time, I just, it just be me. So I just got that hair and hair, there's some new barbers. But um, like people ask, I don't have very many of these barbers on the thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody even see me too? Uh, mm -hmm. I can see you somewhere, but then you might look at me You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I know a bunch of barbers, but they don't have the standards that I have. You know what I'm saying? I know once you're used to me, you're going to feel some kind of way going somewhere. I know yeah. that's why you come to me. Yeah. And I just can't put you. And that's one thing I can say. That's one thing I can say I value about the shop that I work at. Like, it's a everybody eats. 
mm-hmm. environment. Nobody's jealous. Nobody's overly jealous. And nobody's uh, shocking. Right. So, say I'm out like today. I'm I have the space and opportunity to do this interview, or the space and opportunity to go and do a photo shoot because I trust that there's somebody in my shop that can get you where you need to be right. until I can get back behind the chair. And that's all I look for, man. And that's why I tell students when you go shop around for you go. You know, when you get your license, go sit down. Go be a customer for a mm-hmm. day. Realize that that's the fit for you. Mm-hmm. I done had at least 12 I can count easily. Hey, man, Mr. Reggie, you said what, what you said, man. That dude, he didn't help me do nothing. He just kept asking for food at the end of the week. Yeah. <laughs> I was like. I told him it, I told him it <laughs> like this, man. I'm just telling you like this. If you go into a shop, you should be interviewing them the same way they're interviewing you. Ask questions, man. You, know you got to ask questions. It shouldn't be just how much of the blueprint I can pay. You know what I'm saying? Because if you don't get along with people in the shop, or they don't gel with how you move around, the booth rent may be fifty dollars a week. It may seem <laughs> sweet, but you can go in there and you may have some folks in there that steal clippers. You know what I'm saying? You may have some folks in there that every time he get done, he's standing at the door. You need a haircut. You need a haircut. You, know you have no kind of yeah. You know I work in the places. It, it might just be an environment that you don't want to be in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that. You have to make sure you do your own due diligence because, as a matter of fact, you should interview him more than you because you're giving him money. Yeah. So if I'm giving you money to be here, I need to make sure that this is a space where I can grow. If I can't grow, then what am I doing? Man. <laughs> it's you know? a lot. It's a lot, man. <laughs> Why? <laughs> you know? Yeah, it makes sense. And I, hey, they used to call me a shop hopper because, like, for whatever reason, man, if it didn't feel right to me, I'm getting up out of there. Right. Yeah, you like, I'm, I'm getting up out of there, and it, it, it's because of that experience that I teach my students to, before you make a commitment, before you give anybody any money, you know, the reason yeah, I ended yeah. up in the shop that I was in, because, you know, they owned the space or whatever, and he literally told me, he's like, we'll start you out, 25, this month, next month, we go 50, 50, mm-hmm. all the way till you get to, you know, you're building your clientele as your blueprint is going up, and then, you know, you follow on hard times, just come talk to me, that's right. all, that's all he asked. Come talk with me. Be straight up with me. If you start, I've seen many barbers come in that shop and many of them don't work. Mm-hmm. They get let go. Or mm-hmm. like he said, they fire themselves. Because mm-hmm. all I ask you to be honest with me. Don't, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Don't try to backdoor me when I'm giving you. Right. And work. You know what I mean? You can't go in the <laughs> shop and you in there all week, you twirling around in your chair and you smoking weed and then you going to do this and then inside the blueprint. Oh, I ain't got it. So you gonna show up late. Every day. <laughs> You sat in the chair for two hours. You and you watching me? Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what my discernment comes from. When you come to me and be like, boop, we're this slow. No, it's not slow. You just not work. That's basically it. Man, we can sit here and talk for the rest of the day, but I know you got stuff to do. I got stuff to do. Like I said, man, it was great. Yeah, well, great, great yeah. conversation, man. You know, Appreciate like you said, anytime you want to do this, anytime you want to link up, we can do it. Yeah, man, definitely. We got to link up, definitely. And, um, we want to make that kind of a, at least monthly what we did at the detention center. Yeah, um, if not the same cast, we get some other people that could. Yeah, yeah, I know she said. Um, I don't know if you've seen the message that. Uh, yeah, I saw the text message. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna talk to the woman later on and see what day I might be on afternoon because even past the haircuts, you know what I'm saying? It's just speaking. Yeah, don't say. So one of the biggest things I got from going up there is outside of the stuff that the little boys did, you still <laughs> see that they kids. Like when you take all this stuff away, Wait, yeah. you can see that they kids. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Without man. no understanding that. I got to ask one of the little boys. I asked him if he thought he was a good thing to a bad thing. This happened to me. So, like, so with that being said, I said, do you think it's a good thing to a bad thing? Honestly, man, I don't even know. Mm. I said, well, that's a problem. He was like, why? I said, you like this? I said, at your age right now, it's okay not to know what you want to be. Right. Like who you want to be and all that. So you should always know who you are. You know what I'm saying? I said, what ends up happening now is you sitting here telling me I don't know when you did something bad. Everybody around you going to judge you off what you did. Right. So now that they don't see you do something bad, they're going to look at you and say you bad. <laughs> so you did one bad thing, you don't understand that I'm really a good person that just made a mistake. Yeah. You go back and do something else bad and you don't know. They call you bad again. By the third or fourth time, now you just don't accept. It. I'm just bad. Right. So I'm supposed to do bad stuff, but it's not like that. You know what I'm saying? You can, I thought that you can tell right now who you want to be. Like you want to be nice, mean. Say you have to decide that now. That way, it don't put you in a place where you can make mistakes. 
That's what's up, man. If you can, just uh, tell people where they can follow you and how they can get in contact with you and whatever oh. you need support in. Just Oh, uh, this is uh Mr. Majors, the one Majors, uh aka Major Cuts. You can find me on Instagram at Major Cuts, that's M-A-J-O-R-K-U-T-Z. Same thing on Facebook, same thing on Twitter. Um you can go to my website, which is majorcuts.com. Oh, I got plenty of review videos on there. Now um, just come check me out. That's what's up. Y'all know where to get at me at, man. I'll put everything in the description or whatever. But uh, this has been another one. And uh, hopefully we'll have somebody else of this caliber to grace y'all presence again, man. Appreciate y'all.